Hi everyone, welcome back. Today I'm going to be doing a plant maintenance video. So I'm going to be going around doing a bit of pruning, watering and treating for bugs. I treated some of my plants about two weeks ago with a systemic treatment that I got from America. As some of you know, I've been dealing with thrips for many, many months and I tried many different treatments like predatory mites, uh, neem oil, um, horticultural soap, things like that, and nothing seemed to get rid of them. So I opted for a systemic treatment, which I'll be showing you in a moment. Some of my plants haven't yet been treated as I only ordered two bottles and underestimated how much I would need because I have got quite a few plants. It's pretty gloomy out there today, a bit dark and depressing, very cold. If you're wondering what those white things are in the garden, that is my bananas wrapped up for the winter. <laughs> they look a bit strange. Anyway, so I'm going to be taking my Aquanema and my Begonia Maculata Whitei into the kitchen to treat them for thrips. These plants, as far as I know, don't actually have thrips yet, but I'm going to be treating them to make sure that they don't get the thrips. Here we are in the kitchen. So the treatment that I chose is the Bonide Systemic Houseplant Insect Control. And this is for plants that are in pots. So basically you have to measure the pot to see how much you need to put in. So this is a five inch pot, so I will need to put in 1.5 tablespoons of the treatment. So it's saying to mix the granules thoroughly into the top layer of soil, water in thoroughly, and then do not water heavily for the first 10 days, and work granules into the top one to two inches of soil. So I just gave this aquanema a good look over and as far as I can see there doesn't appear to be any thrips on it but they are sneaky little buggers and quite hard to see so I'm hoping there isn't any on it but I'm going to treat the plant anyway okay so this five inch pot needs one and a half tablespoons of the granules so I'm just going to sprinkle them in evenly And then using the other end of the spoon, I'm just going to work them into the soil. And then I'm going to give the plant a thorough watering. Next up, I'm treating the begonia, which will need about three teaspoons of the treatment. So I'm going to be repeating the same treatment on another 30 or so house plants. So I'm obviously not going to film all of them because that will just bore you to death. But hopefully that's these guys sorted and they won't be getting any horrible bugs. This one's fine at the moment as well. But I had so many plants with thrips over the summer, I lost quite a few plants. So I had to take drastic measures to make sure that they don't get thrips again. So my next job is to do a bit of pruning in the biorb air. The Decinia marmorata jewel orchid has completely finished flowering now. It's been flowering for months. And from the looks of it, it doesn't look like it's gonna grow any leaves from the end of the flower spike, which one of my other jewel orchids did. So I'm gonna cut off the flower spike. I really need to get myself a proper pair of pruning scissors for a terrarium because these are a bit gigantic. So I'm just going to snip above this little node here and that's the flower spike pruned. I'd really like to add another photonia in that gap at the back there so I'm going to grab one of my photonias from the living room and dig part of it up basically and then just plant it in that bit at the back so I'll go and get that now. So I've got this lovely full bushy photonia here, plenty to share. 
So what I'm going to do is literally just pull part of it out of the soil. So I've just pulled out kind of one stem that's got roots. And then once you've removed it, you can just kind of do this and it doesn't even look like you've taken any out of it. <laughs> Petonia are very easy to propagate. You could cut part of the stem below a node, pop it in water and then they do grow roots very quickly then you can plant that up or you can do what I just did and literally just pull one of the stems completely out with the roots already attached. So I'm just going to plant up this piece here. There it is, top left, filling in the gap quite nicely. And as you can see, I do have quite a variety of Fetonia in my terrarium. They do love a terrarium environment. I love this bright pink one here. And then at the back there, I've got like a green and white one. And then I just wanted to show you my Begonia Amphioxus that has come back from the dead. I did mention in another video that I had moved it about maybe like four or five inches and it threw a fit and dropped all its leaves and died and then I basically put one of the leaves back in the sphagnum moss and then it's grown this new plant. So let me just get in. Here's the Begonia Amphioxus close up. So this brand new plant has grown from one single leaf that fell off the original cutting. Originally I did buy three cuttings and only one of them survived. They are really dramatic plants, very high maintenance. And I don't know if I would purchase any again, but let's see how this one does. I do love it though, it's really beautiful and very unusual looking but very dramatic. I also need to do a water change today with Flame's tank. Where is he? Usually as soon as he sees me, ah, here he is. As soon as he sees me, he comes swimming up because he wants feeding. We've already been fed today. Don't worry, I'm not going to show you how I changed the water. That's just on my list of things to do today. I really wanted to show you guys my Pink Princess's new leaf. Look at it. It's obviously not quite finished um, unfurling yet. It's only literally just unfurled over the last few days. This is the first, well, it's got little bits of variegation, but this is the first kind of major variegation on it. Wow. And there's already another new leaf kind of coming out there as well. So beautiful. I already watered this one yesterday, but I know this guy needs a bit of a drink. So I'm going to water this one. As with most of my plants, I water little and often. So I'm just going to give it a little drink. Still quite a small root system on this plant. This is the newest leaf from this pink princess. So it has got a tiny bit of variegation on it, not much. But you never know what the next leaf will bring. And I wanted to show you my new planter. Look how cute it is, I found it on eBay. It's pretty small, so it's only really suitable for like, maybe a tiny cactus or cuttings. I was just gonna use it for cuttings. So it's just a Begonia Maculata YTI and some sphagnum moss. Really great for my tropical theme up here in my office. They had loads of different animals as well. It came from Thailand. To be fair though, considering how small it is, it is probably the most expensive pot I've ever bought because I also had to pay import tax on it. So it ended up costing me about 30 pounds, 
but I'm still really pleased with it. It's really good quality and it's just something a bit different. I'm also going to water my Syngonium Pink Splash and there's another new leaf coming and it looks quite pink. It's quite exciting. This leaf's kind of dying off now, so I'll probably cut that off soon, but not yet. I'm going to give it a little drink. Again, I just water a little and often, depending on the weather and the season, will depend on how much I water. It's obviously winter now, so I'm not watering quite as often as I would in the summer. Thanks for watching everyone. I know it's not the most exciting video in the world, but these things need doing, and I do get asked quite often how I water and maintain my plants, things like that. So I just thought I'd take you with me. I have got a, hopefully, a super exciting video coming up for you next week. So keep your eyes peeled for that one. Hope you enjoyed watching and see you all soon in my next video. Take care everyone. Bye.